Today I'll continue with the covering of trays. In the last video I covered a tray with a solid top. In this video I'll demonstrate a method that wraps around the tray and only turns over onto the top but does not fully cover it. The reasons for using this method is that it uses less material, there's only one overlap and less joins visible on the outside of the walls, and to have a pattern all the same way around the tray. The last reason may be why it's usually used. Maybe you have a marbled paper that's combed and has a very noticeable top and bottom. If using the first covering method with the solid top, half the outside walls will go in the opposite direction to the other two. With the wrapping around method, the pattern on each side all goes in the same direction. I always use this method when covering the three-sided trays in clamshell enclosures, and it saves a lot of material. Again, I aim to have overlaps at the long joins to ensure the underlying board does not show through. Once the outside walls are covered, the inside walls are done the same as the first tray, but I'll show it again so you see it done a second time. I cover the walls by wrapping a long strip around the outside of the tray. I minimise the use of measurements with the ruler by taking them from the tray itself. I start with a piece of covering material with a straight edge and a square end. Parallel to the straight edge I mark two wall heights and then add another 10mm for the inside overlap. From the end I mark a line for the outside overlap. For some reason I went with 20mm instead of 10 this usually goes on a short end. I then roll the box along its complete circumference, marking each corner. I start by gluing one long side and once it's applied to the cloth I cut out from each corner. Each time I glue a side onto the cloth I'll cut the cloth out from the corners. For this first edge I also trim off the extensions past the walls of the short overlap piece. The cutting out from the corners needs to be done eventually and it makes wrapping the box easier so I may as well do it now. I put down the short overlap piece and then continue rolling the tray along the length of cloth. When the final corner is reached, the cloth can be trimmed so it finishes right on the corner, assuming it's too long and hopefully not too short. Thank you. 
Next, I turn the cloth onto the base. A little trick is to use a brick to support the tray, assuming the tray is larger than the end of a brick. I go around each corner and pull the cloth into place and cut a mitre and remove the overlapping pieces of cloth. This side of the tray will be covered in some way and thus not having an overlap is fine. It's better to have a smooth surface. Once each corner is mitered, I glue out the cloth and put it down. Now the tray is in exactly the same configuration as the first covering method and turning the covering material down the inside of the walls and onto the inside of the base is done the same way. Since I've tried to narrate this once already I won't do it again but I might show things a bit differently which may be of some use.
In the last video, I mentioned many people just trim the corners on the inside at 45 degrees in a single cut. I do it here to show that it doesn't make much of a difference and it's a bit less fiddly. But I wasn't as careful as I could have been and the mitres on the inside didn't match very well in two corners. These will be covered up so no one will know. I'll do a separate video on lining the inside top of the trays. Hope this is adding to your box making knowledge. As always, I really appreciate you hitting the big thumbs up button. If you're able and want to, you can support the making of more videos like this through Patreon or with a one-off contribution, and the details are in the description below. If you want to be notified of my future videos, please hit the subscribe button. Until next time, cheerio.